Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab. And what I got for you today is not a camera or a lens. It's actually my awesome Polygon Siskiyou T8 full suspension mountain bike. So I'm gonna cover this guy in detail. I've had this bike for about one year and Polygon didn't update it for 2022. So this is a 2021 model, but it's exactly the same, as far as I could tell, for the 2022 model. So I decided I'm gonna review this for those that are out there in the market looking for, in my opinion, one of the best value full suspension trail mountain bikes on the market today. There's, there's like probably five other bikes that are in the same category as this as far as price to quality and stuff, but I still think this one is one of the best values. Ooh, look what the FedEx guy just dropped off. Oh yeah. Guys, new bike just showed up. Super excited. Super excited. Oh yeah. All right, so here's what she looks like when it shows up off the FedEx truck. In my case, comes in a nice box. It's packaged very well. As you can see here, everything is supported and, you know, in a very minimalistic way too. Um, there's just a few straps and some cardboard really is all that's holding this thing together. So you just got to untie a couple of things. That's the dropper post. And that's pretty much it. You just got to work your way around the bike, try not to scratch anything, be careful. When we're talking about the frame, it's got the latest progressive geometry and it's actually called the ALX Trail 6061 aluminum frame. It's got 135 millimeters of travel in the rear there. And it also comes with a toolkit, as you can see, so you can torque things down properly. I just dropped the uh, seat post in there quick. Fairly easy to hook up. You just have to hook the cable up on the bottom. I'm just putting the pedals on now. Um, these are the pedals that came with the bike. I actually changed these pedals out to the uh, Stamp 7s. Handlebars, we have the Entity Expert. They're 780 millimeter handlebars. And for the stem, it's got a 35 millimeter stem. Looking at the brakes, we got the Tektro HD M745s, front and rear, 15 by 110 millimeter through axle for the front. And don't forget to take the little uh, brake pad protector out from your brake pads, from your caliper rather. Uh, they put that in there so you're, in case you hit the brakes by accident. So you gotta take that out before you put the rim on there, like so. And looking at the front there, you can see the Fox Rhythm 34 shock. All right, so now that the bike's all together here, I just wanted to show you the rear cassette. That is a Shimano SLX drivetrain. It's got 10 to 51 teeth on the rear cassette, which is amazing. So this is the Fox Float DPS shock, air shock, and you can see the Tektro brakes, front and rear disc, got the seat there, and looking at the rear tire, uh, the Schwabi Hans Dampf <laughs> V tire, incredible. That's pretty much it, let's move on. literally been beating this thing up hard for about a year. I did have a couple of things uh, happen with the bike that I will go over during the course of this review. I made several upgrades, several changes of course as well, and I will discuss that. But first, let me just give you a little backstory because I think that's important to this review. I mean, I'm not a pro mountain biker, so you're getting like an everyday type guy review of this bike, okay? I'm not like a black belt on you know, mountain bike technology and all that stuff. I'm pretty knowledgeable now after like two years of getting into the sport. Um, but again, I'm just like a regular dude that likes to mountain bike. Um, so from that perspective, that's where this review is coming from. So, you know, listen, I'm over 40, I'm 43, and I really want to just enjoy life. I only have so many years left where I can be active. And I used to mountain bike when I was a young youngster, let's say 16, 17, 18, I was really into it. 
So I got the D6 about two years ago. I actually got the Polygon D6. So I bought that bike. You might have seen that review already. Not necessarily. I actually did two reviews of that bike. You can actually check that out by clicking that over there if you want to check out the D6. The D6 is basically a smaller, lighter duty version of this bike, I would say. This is a more beefy bike. It could take more of a beating. Um, it's stronger. It's a little bit heavier, um, but it's just a more rugged bike. And it actually is a better bike, in my opinion, in a lot of ways. So after using the D6 for about a year, um, you know, I was I ended up meeting friends on the trail. I ended up making some friends. And then over, over the course of like a year, ended up going mountain biking a lot with a lot of different people. And I got the opportunity to try some better bikes and then also notice the weaknesses that the D6 did have, um, such as suspension and things like that, smaller frame, thinner rims, you know, things like that. Uh, as, good, as good as that bike was for the money, you, honestly, the D6 is an incredible bike for the money. I did want more. When I reviewed the D6, somebody actually told me, they're like, Jay, you're gonna grow out of that bike in no time. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like at the time, but they were 100% right. I did kind of grow out of the bike. Um, once you start hitting bigger jumps, rock gardens, things like that, and you ride, you know, some of your friend's bikes that might cost six, $7,000 or whatever the case may be, you start to see and notice the difference between quality and stuff like that. So again, this thing was about $2,500 when I bought it US, and for that amount of money, a phenomenal product. The IS CG05 mount, which is just awesome protection. That actually is what's underneath the bottom bracket here. And you can see how I have this uh, plastic protection shoe under there. It's a great feature because when you go over logs and rocks and stuff, you definitely don't want to hit your big gear. smash up your your chain ring and stuff and your chain so one of those guides is really nice and it has that mount on the bottom of the uh, frame there which is awesome now as far as the suspension goes we have the fox 34 rhythm it actually has 140 millimeters of travel when you're using the 29 inch wheels has 150 when you're using the 27 inch wheels it is the lower end Fox 34 shock they do make several models of the 34 and this is like the lower end version of that, but with that being said, the shock still does perform really well. I actually did put some volume spacers in the front fork, uh, which just takes up some of the air volume. And what it does is it'll progressively slow down when you get to the bottom of the stroke, like when you're at the bottom of the suspension bottoming out, it'll just get a little bit stiffer as you get closer to the bottom. That's what uh, volume spacers do. So this comes with the float DPS this thing broke. This shock broke on me. It failed. I really need to send it back to Fox, but it's going to take weeks to, you know, get it repaired. Even if they can repair it, I don't know. I just went ahead and bought this. It's the Float DPX2, and it's a higher quality shock for sure. Uh, it's honestly a night and day difference when riding the bike compared to this shock. Uh, as good as this shock was, and once you upgrade, you can feel the difference. It's night and day. So that's what I ended up doing. And like I said, I got to send this back. It just, this, this blue thing on the top stopped working. And, uh, you know, the shock itself is starting to leak oil. So I think I just blew the shock. It was probably going, when I went to Wyndham uh, Mountain Bike Park, uh, hitting the jumps and stuff like that, probably was a little too much, not sure. Um, but anyway, it is what it is. So as far as components go, the Polygon T8 comes with the Shimano SLX drivetrain. Uh, it has a one by 12 gear range and it ranges from 10 teeth all the way up to 51 teeth on the rear cassette, which is awesome for climbing. So my previous bike was the uh, Polygon D6 and uh, it didn't have, 
as many gears for climbing. The, the teeth were way less. I think it was like 46 teeth was the easiest gear on the rear cassette. And uh, the T8 here has a 51 tooth. So way easier to climb, especially when you need to go slow because you're tired, you know? So it's just much nicer to be able to cruise, take your time up the hill so you can save your energy for the downhill fun. And I much prefer the larger gear range that the T8 offers. Although I think the new D6 does have a similar gear range now, but uh, my model did not. Pretty cool. All right, I just got to the top for another climb. I'm at Painted Apron this time. And, uh, you know, it was like a mile and a half climb. I locked out the suspension and now I just opened up the suspension here. Actually, I gotta do that here. Let's open that up. It actually goes that way for open. And then this guy, I'm gonna move all the way to open, like so. All right, pretty much good to go. There's the bike, and there's the trail. And uh, hopefully I can get some good footage for you guys, show you what this uh, Polygon T8 can do. This thing is an absolute beast. And the more I ride it, the more I love it, to be honest. So let's just get right into this trail, guys. We got the Tektro HD M745 four piston caliper brakes front and rear and the brakes work awesome. No problems with the brakes whatsoever in my opinion. I've seen other reviewers say that they don't work that good. Coming from my perspective, they are absolutely incredible. It just is what it is. Uh, they're 180 millimeter rotors. As far as the wheels go, the V tires, and they're phenomenal tires, they really are, but they are heavy and slow rolling. The grip on them is phenomenal, I cannot complain about the grip, but they feel so slow when I was trying to pedal when I first got this bike, I couldn't wait to change the tires. So I ended up getting the Max's Recons, which are really fast rolling tires, as you can see here, uh, there were two six front and rear, and the, the knobs are very small, so they're just fast rolling tires, fast rolling trail tires. They worked great, but I did notice it was a little loose on the front. Uh, the front was pushing on me in turns and stuff, and I wasn't used to that. So I ended up putting the V back on the front, and I rode like that with the recon on the rear for quite a while. I really like that setup until I hit mud. Once I hit this like sticky mud, the front tire picked up so much mud that it weighed like 50 pounds, it felt like rolling. And until I got up to speed, like and the mud flipped off, um, that just was a bummer. So I was like, man, these tires, they just, uh, I don't know, they just, the mud holds onto them and they're just heavy. So I ended up going and getting the Maxxis DHF for the front. It's a 2.4 plus size tire, so it works out to like a 2.5 and I got the DHR2 for the rear, and that's a 2.4 inch tire. I actually had these tires on the D6 and I love them, so I just got them again and I'm super happy with them. I went for a ride last night 
with, and it's the first time using this rear tire and the front combined, and I had a really great time. The tires grip incredible, and they are smaller than the stock tires. The stock tires were 2.6, so these are thinner, and I just feel like they're a little bit lighter, a little easier to turn, and it's, they're just faster rolling, and I just particularly like them. Second section here, a little bit higher speed. All right guys, so the first few rides with the Polygon T8 were fantastic, but as I mentioned before, the tires did feel a little bit heavy and the bike itself felt a little bit heavy. So it was harder to climb than I remember on the D6 when I first got the bike. So it took a little bit of getting used to. So I came back and I adjusted the bike a little bit. I moved the seat back and raised it up a little bit. I also lowered the front handlebars and I, I rolled the front handlebars a little bit to move them further out. And that spread my body out a little bit, which put more weight on the front wheel. That in turn made it easier to climb. And I did notice quite a bit of a difference that it got much easier to climb when I made those adjustments. And now I could climb like an animal on this thing. I'm so used to it and I'm obviously in better shape now. So it's just so much fun. Now, when I went out there for the first time, I was using 25 pounds of pressure in the front and rear tire. I had to adjust the rear shock for my weight and I weighed 220 pounds at the time. So I put 215 uh, pounds of pressure in the rear shock and I put 100 in the front fork. I put six clicks from max for the rebound on the rear shock and four clicks from max on the fork. And that's how I went out for the first ride and the, and the bike felt really good as far as the suspension goes. I was super happy with that. I absolutely love this 170 millimeter dropper post too. It goes so far out of the way because of this short seat stay. It's, it makes it so much easier to go downhill and just you know play with the bike without having to worry about your butt hitting the seat. Just a game changer when it comes to riding downhill and stuff.
So I am running tubeless uh, front and rear, and I wanted to show you this cool tool I got um, for beating the tire. They make these things, this is a tank, and I got it on Amazon, and you basically just fill this up with your regular pump, and then you can screw this into the valve and release the pressure, and it like blows the tire onto the bead. I did find it was kind of hard to get tires to bead on these rims because the rims are significantly wider than on the D6, and it's just, you know, you're kind of stretching the tire out. It's made for 2.6 inch tires, so that means that the, the rim can actually fit a variety of sizes. So now I'm using a 2.4, which is smaller, so I was having a really hard time getting it to bead. I tried putting a tie down around the tire and everything, which has worked in the past, but as it turns out, this tool is a lifesaver. It's very affordable. It wasn't that much. It was like 50 bucks, 40 bucks or something. Just fill it with air, and then boom, the tires pop right on and it makes it super easy to bead the tires. I also put this stuff in there, uh, this muck off. It's just, you know, slime that you put in the tire, basically, and it works really well. I haven't had any flats yet, so I can't complain about that, but I did also purchase a plug kit. So I have this plug kit. All this stuff will be linked below if you're interested. So I have tire plugs in case I get a flat, and I also bought a CO2 kit. So I have CO2 tanks. These are the larger tanks. It has more air in it because the mountain bike tires are so large. And here's like the little fitting. I just have it in a Ziploc bag uh, so it doesn't get dirt and stuff in it. But I got that to blow the tires up if need be just for, you know, convenience and speed. And I also have just a regular hand pump, uh, you know, the little hand pump that's in my backpack um, that I used with the D6. And I also wanted to show you, I originally put these grips on. Yeah, these are the GE ones, these, these grips here. Um, this is actually the GA3 like packaging because I just stuck these grips on. But I originally put these grips on. If anybody wants these, let me know. Uh, I'll ship them out to you. I'm not using them. And they're used, you know, they're in great shape still, but I actually prefer the uh, GA3, which has this extra cushiony area for your hand. So I switched back to those grips just to let you guys know. I also invested in some lights because riding at night is unbelievably fun and they make these lights uh, lights are incredible and riding at night is like an adventure. You're in the trails, you're trying to navigate. It kind of looks like you're in a video game or something when you're riding, that's how it feels. So um, I definitely got that. I have another light for the handlebar. So I have one light on the handlebar, one light on the helmet, and that'll allow you to look and see and also the bike in front of the bike will always be lit via the handlebars. One other thing I wanted to talk about was the mud guard here. I got, it's a Mucky Nuts mud guard. It's definitely a large mud guard. There's no doubt about it. And it does move around a little bit. It has like some flex. 
I don't like the flex part of the mud guard because it, it does hit the tire occasionally. When you hit a big bump, you hear like, Rrr, you know, it'll do stuff like that, which is not a big deal, but it's one of those things you notice, you know, and sometimes rocks and leaves will get like stuck in there. Um, but the huge benefit is I've, I have not gotten mud or water in my face or in my eye more particularly uh, since I put that guard on. I had the smaller guard on the D6 and I'd still occasionally get mud in my face. I haven't gotten any in my face with that mud guard. So that's what matters to me. And I'll take the slight negative of it moving around a little bit and stuff, you know, with a grain of salt because I'd rather not get that mud in my eyes. There's nothing worse than getting something in your eyes when you're mountain biking. You could, it's very dangerous. You could lose control. Uh, it hurts, you know, so mud guard, definitely get a mud guard. And I recommend that one. Although, like I said, it moves around a little bit. It is what it is. All right, guys, so check out some of this footage of me going down this trail called Cosmic Charlie in this awesome place. It's called Port Jervis Watershed. So it's in New York. Port Jervis Watershed is what they call it. And it's like a park and they have these amazing downhill trails. So you can get an idea of how this bike handles in the real world uh, with me riding it anyway. I'm not an expert mountain biker. I'm pretty decent at mountain biking, but by no means a pro mountain biker. So don't expect to see me launching hundreds of feet off jumps and stuff like that. I'm just hitting the trails and, uh, you know, having some fun out there, which is what it's all about for somebody like me. So let's check that out. Dropping. All right, so problems that I have with this bike, guys. The cassette loosened up once. The cassette got loose and I could hear it. It was making all this noise. It was making this like bong, bong, bong noise. And when I would touch the cassette, I, I moved it and I was like, oh, that's not good. So I just had to buy a uh, cassette tool. You know, I just bought a bicycle kit uh, to work on the bikes and the cassette tool is super easy. You just put it, take the wheel off and I just had to tighten up the cassette. So that did come loose after a couple months of riding, just to let you know. And again, I, I already talked about the rear shock broke. I didn't have any problems with the brakes. I didn't have any problems other than the gears. The gears occasionally, I did need to adjust. The cable um, does stretch over time. So I did have to adjust the gears just a little bit. Not too bad though. I was able to do it mostly from by the shifter. There's a little turn thing there that will add tension to the, to the cable. So I was able to do most of the adjustments there. But I did recently just adjust the in and out points again on the rear cassette 
which you can adjust here with the Allen keys. It's, it's fairly straightforward, but if you've never done it before, do not mess with those. Watch a tutorial first for sure, because you will totally screw your gears up if you just start, start turning screws. So don't do that. Watch a tutorial first and do it step by step if you're gonna attempt that, or just bring it to a bike shop and let the, let the experts handle it. Because like I said, you don't wanna screw your gears up, then you won't be able to ride at all. Let me tell you what I think of the bike as it performs at this point. Now I have it dialed in, right? I took the time, I dialed it in, I made a couple of upgrades here and there. I actually got a new stem also, um, just to move it out just a little bit. I just moved the stem, it's just a little bit further out. And I got this, uh, race face stem, really nice quality stem. The bike is super comfortable. I got the Ergon seat on there and it's it's a very comfortable seat. And I've just gotten like, you know how you like when you do something for a long time, your body just gets used to it. So like my biomechanics have like adapted to the bike, I think. So I'm super comfortable on it now. I don't have any problem, like everything is just dialed in. I'm super, super happy with it. The suspension is amazing on this bike. It's super supple. Um, going through rock gardens and stuff. I mean, it just sucks up the bumps so good uh, that you can just hammer down the trail. You, I can go so much faster downhill on this bike than I could on the D6. And it's not necessarily skill related, it's the bike itself. Uh, the confidence I have on this bike compared to the D6 is night and day. I feel way more comfortable going downhill on this bike. Now, going uphill, I had to dial this bike in a little bit. It was harder to climb initially on this bike compared to the D6. The front gets a little bit light. So what I did was I got the new stem, like I told you, and I lowered the spacer, I lowered the handlebar a little bit to put a little more weight on the front. And that did help significantly with the climbing. So now that I've learned that and I've adjusted my body a little bit, uh, I've been very happy with the climbing performance on this bike. I can pretty much make every single climb that I've tried. There's a couple, you know, when the rocks are really bad where you, you end up slipping or hitting a pedal, it happens. But for pretty much the most part, every climb that people are making, I'm able to make with this bike, no problem. So super happy with that. I really can only compare it to the D6 because I haven't ridden that many other bikes enough to say how you know bad or good it is compared to others. Uh, it's just my experience compared to the D6 in particular. So again, great performer uh, uphill and downhill is just exceptionally good in my opinion. Now, like I said, as far as durability goes, I, have, I did have a few problems that the rear shock broke the cassette did loosen up the one time. The rear derailleur, you know, I have, you have to adjust the gears. I think that's more of a maintenance thing. The only other thing that I've noticed with this bike is the front wheel has like a, a it went out of true a little bit. So I have to get my front wheel trued. I might try to do it myself, I don't know. But it, it does have a little bit of a wobble. And one time I was, when I was at the mountain bike park, I, I kind of went off a drop and the front wheel like hit like a berm and the tire actually like came off the rim for a second and went right back on. So it like burped and it made like this like boom sound. I thought something, I thought my tire blew up, but what it did was it just let a bunch of air out and then it rebeated. So I just lost like 10 pounds of pressure. And, but I think that incident is what bent my rim a little bit. So my front wheel, if I spin it, it has like a little won't, won't, won't like that. It's not that bad, I'm exaggerating it. Listen, at the end of the day, guys, spending $2,500 on this beast, I cannot recommend this bike enough. It's totally worth the money. I, pretty much all my friends are riding bikes that cost double this, and I'm, I, I, they're not performing any better from what I can see. Like, obviously, spec-wise, those bikes are lighter. They might have slightly better front suspension, but that's pretty much it. And, uh, you know, they just, they cost a lot more because they're name brands, you know, and uh, if you just stray away from the name brands, look at something like the Polygon, you can really get an unbelievable value for the dollar. And I, I still think this is one of the best bikes for the money um, today, especially if you're riding a little bit more aggressively. If you're uh, riding on just rail trails and very light trails, something like the D6 would be fine. But if you're going downhill and you're starting to jump and hit, bigger rocks and obstacles, you're gonna want something more heavy duty like the T-Series for the uh, trail riding. And then of course there's the Enduro bikes, which are the next beefier level above this. But with the Enduro bike, you're gonna gain a little bit of weight, um, but with that weight, you're gonna gain a more travel, more suspension travel, and it's gonna perform better going downhill, but it's gonna be heavier and harder to climb. 
So that, it's just up to you and what you're doing, you know. Um, I'm not racing the bike and I really don't need something that rugged. I don't think that I got almost probably a thousand miles on this bike. Just again, super happy with it. So, all right guys, I really hope you got something out of this review and again, I'm just trying to give you my honest feedback on this bike as a mountain biker dude, not a pro rider, just a regular guy out there with some friends having fun. And this bike is yield, yielded me a ton of hours of fun. All right, guys, so if you have any questions or if you have the Polygon T8 and you want to share some experiences with it, please, below the video, let me know. Like, what upgrades did you make? What problems did you have with the bike? And, and things like that. And if you have questions, like what do I do here? How do I do that? Feel, feel free to ask, I'll try to help you out. Uh, not a problem at all. All right, so you guys have a great day. Be safe out there on the trail. Hunting season's coming soon where I live in New York. So be careful and uh, wise to that. And I will catch up with you guys later. All right, take care.